Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to start Isaiah 42, 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. Therefore, pray and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith, restore. And it seems to me today that there's not enough uh, help me to put it right. There's just not enough caring. There's just not enough people that are really wanting to see the things of God come forth. Not just go on your way, go on your routine day by day and look at the TV and say, oh, that's terrible. Look at that. Oh, I like that one. Oh, that one over there is terrible. And just go on to a routine. It seems like it seems like our way of living is being disrupted. It's being more or less jumbled. One time we'll see something that is lifted up and everything is great and everybody's wonderful. The next day, someone over here is putting this down. We don't know what is going to happen next. We need to get settled in the Lord. We need to get settled knowing what is going to happen in here. And that God is going to take care of it. So many times people, I hear more complaints than anything else of what to do good or how to how to fix something or how to how to pray for something. But as Isaiah said, all this is going on, people snared in homes, prison houses, none delivereth, none saith restore. The church of God has got to start saying restore. We have got to start moving in the direction that the Holy Spirit would have us to, not to just look at what's going on and shake her head and, oh, I hope that doesn't happen. Hope, in that context, doesn't do a bit of good. What we need is just declare, decree the things of God, the good things, the right things, Declare the the needs, the needs of our people, what we can do to meet it. You don't have to go out and, I'm not saying rent an auditorium and have a, I don't know, <laughs> just have a great big, something to, to attract people. We need to get first down in our hearts what what needs what this country needs. And it needs a lot. It needs a lot. We need to not not criticize, not go out of our way to make jokes about people or say how terrible this one is, how great this one is. And then the next day, it'll be reversed. We need to first get in contact with God and say, where are you going to take us, Lord? I want to know what I need to do today. Lord, I want you to guide everyone that's in a power position of power, those that are causing mayhem in our country and all of the different ways. We don't. I couldn't begin to name them all, but you all know what's going on. But what is going to change it? Nothing but the people of God coming together, being concerned, caring, finding out what needs to be done, what needs to be said, how we need to pray, who we need to talk to, what needs to be brought to light. 
we don't, we don't need to be hidden anymore because we, as God's people, are what this country has to depend on. Many don't know it, but what else can we depend on? Galatians 6, 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore him, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. This is, this is powerful. We need to begin to, Take this word, throw it in the devil's face, and say, you are not going to have this nation. You are not going to control us. We are going to raise up against you, and you will not win. Satan, you are on the losing side. I don't care what you say. I don't care how many million, million trillionaires Say this, that, and something else, and this is the way it's going to be. No, God is the one that says this is the way it's going to be. And we as his children everywhere need to rise up and speak against against the wrong and for the right. It's a, it's a simple thing. But people are taking, either taking things too drastic, too mixed up to even dangerous or else just turn your backs and saying oh well it'll work out it'll work out something will take place well who's going to work it out if it's not you and me who's going to work it out the people of God need to rise up and begin to first begin to worship him Lift him up and don't be afraid to lift him up when you're out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to walk down an aisle of Walmart and hear somebody spill out some tirade of filth and nastiness and complaints and just look all right. If nothing else, start singing Amazing Grace. We could, God's people seem to want to just kind of stand back and watch and see what happens. Well, we, we've got to be, we've got to be careful. We've got to be so dainty and so, no, we don't. We need to, when we see the things that Satan is trying to bring on our land, on our world. We don't need to say, well, you know, just take it easy, just hold your breath for a while and it'll something will happen. No, it won't. We're the ones that need to double up these fists and say, Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We do not give in to your powers because you do not have any power that can fight and win against our Lord. But we need to take hold of this. We need to believe it. We need to walk in it. We need to spread the word. We need to do everything we can to lift up God and his power. And the more we lift him up, the greater the things are going to turn. This is, this is going to be short, probably, but I don't know. I don't, I don't want to try to sound like a fanatic, but just sitting back watching it on TV and going, oh my, and that terrible, that doesn't do any good. Getting down on our knees in the bedroom and talking to him, that's what's going to do some good. Talking to other people, that's what's going to do some good. People 
everywhere seem to have no problem spilling out cuss words or putting down all the, the uh, well, the ones that are supposed to be our leaders in the in the natural in the in this world. But what's God's people doing? We have got to take con control first of what comes and goes into our lives. What we need spread out to open up. You can walk through a store, down a street, anywhere, and hear people saying, you know, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Well, I wish he'd go kill that guy, and uh, this this is going to happen overnight. You know, this we're going to get this, we're going to get that done. How many times do you walk down the street and hear anybody saying, praise the Lord. It's a beautiful day today. There's, there's trouble out here that there's trouble here or there somewhere else, so well, let's pray about it. We've got to, we've got to just be willing to let Satan know who we are and let all his minions know who we are. They, you cannot just defeat God's people. You cannot defeat God's people if we take our stand and day to day strengthen don't fear. Don't fear. Even if you if you feel the, like you're about to throw up or feel like your heart's beating out of your chest, just say no, no, Satan, you can't do it. No, you're not going to scare me. You're not going to tell me what to do. You're not going to make me lose. We are going to win. God's people are going to win. And so, so many times we see people just just being almost covered up with sorrow, with fear, with sickness, with things that God can take care of. Have you ever thought about that? You see somebody that's just about to go their last mile, and you can tell it, you can tell them there's a, it's a drug dragged down, drug too, but people that, when they're so just on their last leg, just saying, well, there's just no use trying anymore. You run into people like that, I see a lot of them. Don't, don't be backward about it. Don't you see somebody standing on the street corner crying? If you've never seen them before in your life, that doesn't make a difference. Go put your arm around them and start praying for them. Start telling them what God can do. Ask them what you can do for them. If God's people, by the multitude, begin to just to want to minister to those that are in need to begin with, that would be a great thing because there are so many, there's too much being taken away. There's too much being just not, not allowing the people of God to speak. And there's too many that are just too afraid. Don't be afraid. If you're living for God, you have him in you, then you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. Nothing can overcome you. And we have to, we have to start caring. I think we have to start caring more. See things that are ugly, that are dirty, that are, ooh, what am I supposed to do now? 
I'll just turn my back and hope somebody else comes along and takes care of it. We can't do that anymore. We cannot do that anymore. You pass somebody on the street that's, you can tell that they've got a need. And if we stay tuned in to God, we will be able to tell. When you see somebody, you just see somebody standing. I have, I've, not long ago, just walked out of, of the dollar store. And a young lady was standing boys down the sidewalk, just head down, just, you could just tell that he, she was just, something, something was wrong. And everybody was just passing by and about to jostle her off the sidewalk and she didn't know what to do. And I went up and spoke to her and she immediately turned around and grabbed me like that, like I was a long lost friend, put her arms around me. She's a little short lady. I <laughs> to put her arms around my waist and laid her head over my chest and started crying. I got to minister to her that day. I got to, she got she got lifted up. She got I believe I don't believe I know that she got something from God that day. The Lord told, put me in that place. Things like that can happen. Things like that happen a lot if we just Stay tuned in. We have got to lift people and lift each other up. We have got to strengthen all the... We've got to strengthen our cause. We've got to lift it up. We've got to, we've got to stop worrying about what's it going to look like. Oh, I don't want to stand here and cry in Walmart. It doesn't matter. When we see a need, I think, God well, must have put us there to see that need. But we not only need to worry about the country and the world, we definitely do need to be concerned. We definitely do need to ask God, what can I do? Lord, show me how to pray. If I don't know what to ask you to do about this situation, you tell me. Get down on your knees by your bedside when you're alone or your living room or invite 50 people to come to your house and do the same thing, whatever you're comfortable with. But we have got to do something. We as people of God have got to do something besides stand around and talk or make jokes about it. We've got a country that is, Satan is trying to drag down and completely destroy because this has been known as a country unto God. And we have to be the ones to lift it up and continue for throughout the world to know that there's something different about the United States of America and know what it is. We, I don't know if any of you uh, listen to a minister on TV named Robert Morris, but he, told, he, he mentioned something one time I wrote it down. He was talking about uh, being concerned paying attention, don't, don't just, you know, don't just think about yourself. But he said he was on his way home, he had uh, picked up his son from, from a ball game, and they were, they drove home, and he pulled up in the driveway, and as he did, his, his son said, look, what's that? And he looked up, and the chimney on the house next to his looked like it had a fire starting to crackle up out of it. And it was late at night and there was no lights on over there, but the cars were there, so he knew somebody was there. And sent his son to go into their house real quick and call the fire department, and he went over there to wake people up, which he did. And they got him out and the fire department came and, and that was good. And he said, you know, that, we don't, we do things like that when they're unexpected. We notice them once in a while when it's a big deal. But 
how much do we do on a Sunday? We don't know. I haven't seen. I don't know even what's going on for sure. We can pray at the very least. We can pray. We can pass people on the street and get if you try to stay tuned in enough that when you pass, you know there's a need there. You don't have to go run and stop and grab them, but you can pray. We have we I think we have to be more tuned in to our surroundings. We need to be, and what we can do about. It. And the uh, minister that I was speaking of, as he, after he told all this, he said how, you know, just if it had been a few, few minutes earlier before the fire got to the place where you could see it, or a few minutes later, the whole block could have been on fire. But he said, you, we never think about things like that until they're happening. But we need to. And if too many think just, what's, gonna, what's, gonna, what's it going to do to me? What's going to happen to me? But the, the uh, thing that he said that stuck with me is think about this. Your, your neighbor's house might not be on fire, but your neighbor could be. Watch. Don't, don't just go out for a drive or run to here or there and go back home and do this and that. Watch around you. See what's going on around you. Who might have a need who might just just needed a cheery word or just I don't know maybe, maybe <laughs> my clothes probably look old and shabby anyway so people don't don't hesitate to cry on them but I, there's been numbers of times I really just run across people in a in a store that I've never seen before but I could tell something was wrong. And I'm, there's nothing special about me. I mean, anybody can tell if we keep tuned in, if we care. And somebody comes up and lays their head on your shoulder and starts crying. Don't push them away. However they smell or however much booze they've had or anything else, don't push them away. I like the way that this man put it. Maybe the house isn't on fire, but you might, your neighbor might be. And we need to we need to be more alert. I believe we need to be more caring. And we need we need to care for the small things that happen in our lives and other people's lives up to the great big ones that's happening all over our country. But don't don't just say all oh, the big shots will take care of that. The ones with all the money will take care of that. The, they know what to do over here. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. This has probably been just a little bit disjointed. A little bit rusty, haven't done this for a while. But just stay alert. See what you can do for somebody. Look around you, you'll find You'll find somebody that needs something. And when you, whatever times that you pray, don't just pray for your family or pray for one or two people that come across your mind, but pray for this nation. Pray greatly for this nation. For heaven's sakes, don't make a joke out of it. I see that too much. There's nothing to joke about. We're up in a turbulent time. But I 
as long as we have the Lord and as long as we take what he gives us and give it out and use it, we can come out victorious. Miss, would you close, please? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that we can be in your house. Lord, keep us mindful of those around us and let us recognize when our neighbor, our friend, our co-worker, someone we pass on the street is on fire and let us bring your power and your love and your healing and deliverance to them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.